Hello to all the beefsteaks who are watching out there. This is Carla, and I'm back again in my kitchen today for a high summer special recipe from That Sounds So Good. Today, I am making the dead simple tomato soup in the style of sauce. This dish was inspired by the last little swipe of tomato sauce that you have when you're eating like spaghetti with a fresh burst tomato sauce and you drag your bread through it and it's so delicious. I was thinking about that and I was like, why can't we just have a whole bowl of that? So that's what I wanted this tomato soup to taste like. It also includes a trick for making thinly sliced toasty garlic chips that I'm gonna show you how to do. This recipe is stupid easy, and it is the one that you wanna make in high summer season where the tomatoes are abundant and bodacious. This is your high summer soup, and it's super. So when you're buying a tomato, you want to look for tomatoes that are heavy for their size, which means they're nice and juicy and not shriveled up and sad inside, and they should smell really good. So, you know, get in there with your schnoz, and give them some smells so good. Yeah, my next book actually is gonna be called That Smells So Good. I wanna shout out, great comment that we got from a viewer um, to talk about tomato types. I'm using a beef steak. I'm on the Northeast. Jersey beef steak, one of the greatest tomatoes. I would not use heirloom tomatoes for a sauce. It would seem a little bit like a waste because the beauty of an heirloom tomato is the beauty of the heirloom tomato. They're all different colors and sizes. They have really cool, wiggly outside shapes. And for something like that, I would make a caprese or just a beautiful fresh tomato salad and not necessarily puree it into a sauce. Generally, soup and sauce tomatoes are gonna be the same because you're looking for high flesh, low seed ratio. Plum tomatoes, you're gonna hear that a lot, but anything in that kind of oblong shape is gonna be a good soup and sauce tomato. I love to make this soup and I love to make big batches of sauce at the very end of tomato season, wherever you are, you will find at the farmer's market bins marked seconds. And those are tomatoes that maybe got bumped along the way, got a couple bruises, maybe they're juicing out. They're usually so much cheaper, like half the price per pound. And that is also a really great choice because they're getting pureed. It doesn't matter if they have a little bruise on them. And also, can we embrace imperfections finally? Like, it's not even an imperfection, it's character. I have a bruise on my shin right now, and you know what it's from? It's from a GD barbell smacking into my shin. I wear it with pride. You've been places, you've done things. Same with the tomats. Celebrate, embrace, puree, eat, enjoy, live. Today I'm using my food mill. I love my food mill. I'm obsessed with it. I wanna use it as much as possible. I'm gonna use it to puree this because I want that kind of rustic texture in the soup, but you could absolutely do this by pulsing it in a food processor. Just don't over pulse because you don't wanna aerate the tomato if you've ever tried to make like salsa in a food processor and you end up with a bunch of pink foam. We don't want that. So you would gently pulse to get to the texture or you could also grate the tomatoes on the large holes of a box grater if you don't have a food processor. So we have analog and electric options. The grandmas would definitely have had a food mill. So you can see as I start to get down to the bottom here, mostly what's left is skin and seed because the flesh is getting pushed through. Some of the seeds and some of the skin is gonna get forced through the little holes in that disc and that's okay too. It's all very tomato-y. You can use these seeds and what's left of the skin as compost. You could throw it into your next veggie stock if you wanna freeze it and keep your scraps and do that. Or you could just inhale its deliciousness it's definitely loose, it's like free flowing, but it has some heft to it. It has like a little bit of weight to it. So that's our pureed tomato. I would like to point out, as of yet, I have not gotten any on my jumpsuit. I'm gonna make some garlic chips, which are going to be a garnish for the soup, but they're also going to flavor the oil that the tomatoes are cooked in. I'm using my mandolin. If you were cutting by hand, you're just going to want to go pretty thin. If they're too thin, you just won't have any control. They'll be so thin that they cook almost instantly. So I want to give myself like a little bit of a buffer by having a slightly thicker piece of garlic. If you have a slightly thicker piece of garlic that you cook into that crispy little chip, you just have more to bite into. 
This is a one pot situation. Choose a sauce pot that's big enough for the tomatoes to go in afterwards because I'm gonna use the same pot to make the garlic chips as I do the soup. It goes in one right after the other. And importantly, we are going into a cold pan. The reason I'm starting cold is again for control and sort of gradually bringing up the temperature of the garlic in the oil rather than dropping these thin slices of garlic into hot oil because you wouldn't get a nice even browning and you also would be sort of stressed out to get them out of there fast enough. Before turning on the heat, I'm gonna stir all of these in. Take a little picture for your Instagram now so you can have a before and after. And I'm gonna start over medium. Garlic is sticky. Because of that, the chips are actually gonna wanna stick to each other. So as the oil heats up, kind of try to encourage everybody to have their own real estate in the bottom of the pot. I love adding the pepper to the beginning of the heating of the oil as well, because it is gonna bloom the pepper. It's gonna extract all of those essential oils. That's good. Here's what the book says. Cook stirring frequently until the garlic is pale golden and starting to crisp, period. You know what's missing from that? And I cannot believe I opened this book and saw it. No time, I gave no time to, which is really, really unusual for me and for the 700 people who copy edited this book. So we're gonna find out exactly how long it takes today. I'm seeing some beautiful translucency. I'm seeing some curling of the edges. I'm hearing sizzling. People are not sticking. We're very close. I'm seeing light sand color on some of the edges and the thinner guys. I'm taking these out. They're gonna be our garnish and our topper and leaving the oil behind. I'm not using a paper towel for reasons I don't quite understand, but that's how I wrote it in the book and I, I stand by it. I'm separating them so that they don't stick together. All right, you can hear. They're nice and crisp. That took eight minutes. If you have your book handy, please go ahead and mark it up. Thank God people were here timing because I was not. Still over medium heat. I have my beautiful garlicky, peppery, delicious oil. Here's my pureed tomatoes. You should expect to hear that sizzle because again, we have a liquidy thing going into a hot, oily thing. I've managed to get tomato juice a lot of places today, but still not on my jumpsuit. Crushed red chili. You could skip this if you're not a spicy person. And this, I now wanna see come to a simmer, raising the heat just a bit. As this is coming up to a simmer, I'm gonna dunk in my fresh basil. I'm leaving these on the stalks and not taking the leaves off because I wanna be able to remove the basil later. So this is like basil tomato tea infusion happening. And that's another reason that a shorter cook time is gonna preserve all of the fresh aromas of this. And the goal here is to truly, unlike the garlic, as quickly as possible, cook the tomatoes until it's slightly thickened, which is going to take about 16 to 18 minutes because I did have a time for that. Soup's on. So what I love that I'm seeing is like the really beautiful, still bright red orange color is intact. Question some of you might ask would be, Carla, would that be a good sauce for pasta? Because I made it tastes like the delicious ends of a pasta sauce? And the answer is totally. I would cook it down a bit more. Then it would be great, but we're not here for pasta today. We got our gorgeous garlic chippies. A little more chili flake. A little flaky salt. A little drizzle drazzle. If you have an oil that you've been hanging on to because somebody told you you should just use it as a finishing oil, use it today. Oh my God, stop. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good, I could cry. This is like the kind of cooking you wanna do in summer. It's so simple. It's all about like one or two ingredients. It tastes amazing. One pot, the stove is not on for a long time. This is gonna be a really good bite. Mm. Serve it with bread. In conclusion, I would like to congratulate myself for not getting tomato on my jumpsuit.